a log. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm pleased to share this uh, session on ATM performance management and management. We have two talks. The first talk is by Hiroko Irabayashi. Hiroko is a research at the Electronic Navigants Research Institute in Tokyo. And she's also a student at the Graduate School of Tokyo Metropolitan University. She's going to talk about feasibility study of free routing airspace operation over the North Pacific airspace. And um, I give the floor to you, Hiroko. Uh, hi, uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for my introduction, uh, Chairperson. I'm Hiroko Hirabayashi from Japan. Uh, I'm very uh, happy to, uh, and uh, uh, thank you for very much for giving me uh, the opportunity to, uh, to make a presentation this ATM Seminar 2021. Uh, so uh, the title of my presentation is Feasibility Study of Free Routing Space Operation over the North Pacific uh, airspace. Uh, I have two other authors, uh, Mike Brown and Noboru Takeichi. So uh, I will begin uh, my presentation. Uh, the target of this study are uh, flights over the North Pacific, uh, focusing airspace route design and air traffic flow. Uh, in the North Pacific airspace, there are many flights connecting Asia countries and North America. Uh, with the economic growth up, so especially Asian countries in recent years, uh, this area is one of the regions with the highest increase of air transportation demand. In the airspace and the route configuration of this area, it can be uh, roughly divided into two. Uh, no park boot area and the same park area here and here. Uh, in no park area, uh, there are five parallel peak status routes established in 1980s. And in SEPAC area, on the other hand, there are no peak status route. In SEPAC area, flexible truck operation called packets are being carried out. Uh, long haul flights in the mid latitude are highly affected by wind aloft, so packet trucks are calculated based on forecast wind aloft and published daily by the relevant air navigation service providers. Airspace and NOPAC routes have not changed significantly since 1980s. But the traffic demand and the communication, navigation, and the surveillance environment, so th that is CNS environment, have changed. First, a shift from hub and spoke to point to point for passenger flights. In the 1980s, uh, many passenger flights, Asia, Europe, or uh, Asia, North America, East Coast, flew via Anchorage uh, in Alaska. Uh, but uh, it became to be possible to fly long duration or via Lucia airspace. So passenger flights become a point to point from half to spoke and the city pairs are increasing. Uh, here it should be noted that Anchorage is currently in high demand as a cargo flight hub, but it is ex expected that the demand scheduled time for cargo and passengers will be different. So the point is that the traffic demand is changing. Next, uh, improved CNS techniques using the satellite to allow reduce separation minima and more flexible operations. Uh, this change has a significant impact on the air traffic control environment. If the required separation minima between aircraft is reduced, airspace capacity will increase. So uh, there will be room for the aircraft to fly uh, freely. Therefore, uh, we are exploring advanced airspace and route design that allows greater flight efficiency and flexibility. 
Uh, in this slide, uh, I'll explain about the separation, uh, sorry, uh, the, yeah, the proposed concept of airspace and the route design is not about FRA. FRA is a free route airspace. A free route airspace, that means uh, remove fixed five ATS routes and uh, allow free route operations in the NOPAC area. NOPAC area here. And the airspace users can freely design their routes, use a preferred route, UPRs, in this area. Uh, in other words, expand UPR, uh, UPR airspace, uh, like SEMPAC. SEMPAC airspace is already executed, uh, so like a UPR operations. So uh, other words, expand UPR airspace from the SEMPAC area. Uh, in the evaluation, uh, metrics uh, for measurement is required. Uh, for calculation of metrics, uh, I first produced uh, flight trajectories by first time simulation. Uh, as uh, evaluation metrics here yeah, for the flight route efficiency, I mainly used fuel consumption. And for the airspace capacity, a potential loss of separation, PILOS, were applied. Uh, PILOS were also used in the European FRA and I referred it. So this slide, this slide will, I, I will explain about the separation standard over the so target airspace non specific function. Uh, communication and surveillance are mainly carried out uh, using the satellite. Uh, in this airspace. And uh, separation standards vary depending on their CNS capabilities. Uh, since 2013, uh, performance based communication and surveillance, uh, we call the PBCS, has been officially introduced in this area. Uh, the minimal horizontal separation currently applied uh, is 30 nautical miles lateral and the 30 nautical miles longitudinal. Uh, these separations are applicable if the conditions shown uh, here are met. Furthermore, uh, for example, uh, by utilizing the space-based ADSB, uh, there is a possibility of further reduced separation in this airspace in the future, I think. To measure the NOPAC FRA performance, uh, metrics were compared, and these metrics were obtained from trajectories by simulation. So this slide shows uh, variables, uh, variables related to the simulation. Uh, first, uh, two airspace configurations were compared, baseline and uh, NOPAC FRA. The baseline reflects the current uh, NOPAC 5 parallel ATS fixed route. And the NOPAC FRA allows the NOPAC uh, area to be freely routed. Next, N times, N times wind conditions reflecting. Uh, it is necessary to reflect the wind conditions to generate flight routes because optimal routes are greatly affected by the wind conditions in this area. Uh, here, a uh, clustering method were applied and end dates, end dates uh, were selected as a wind reflection date. Uh, I will explain details, more details later. And six traffic scenarios were created. One scenario of the departure time of the time scheduled as baseline and created by randomly changing the departure time five times, total five or six traffic scenarios were created. And uh, uh, I considered these three, uh, three horizontal separation minima, 15 nautical mass, 13 nautical mass, and 15 nautical mass. Uh, this slide shows about the baseline scenario for the simulation. A one-day baseline traffic scenario was created based on the actual flight plans. Uh, from, the, uh, from the flight plan, uh, origin and destination airport, 
uh, aircraft type and uh, EOBT as a depart time and the cruiser altitude were referred to. In scenario, a flight to fly in this airspace was selected uh, from the actual flight plan, uh, such as flights uh, between uh, Asian countries, connecting Asian countries and North America uh, uh, written here. A total of 451 flights uh, made up a one day scenario. Uh, this figure shows the number of departures flights per hour in the one day this one is scenario in the time order. Uh, the scenario was created as a current realistic scheduled departure times uh, for East Band and West Band respectively. In the scenario of simulation, uh, route, route of individual flights is necessary. And uh, since assuming free route airspace, so uh, creation of user preferred route, UPR, are needed. Uh, in the FRA of your control, uh, airspace users can plan route between a defined entry point and a defined exit point or by a zero or several intermediate point. Uh, however, the target airspace is uh, comparatively large and the flight duration are long and the flight optimal route of course, uh, depends heavily on the wind aloft. So uh, in UPR creation, uh, networks were created and uh, such minimum flight time, minimum flight time track. Uh, this method uh, referred to percot creation. A uh, create node link networks of possible routes in the target space and calculate optimal route. Uh, in this study, minimum flight time track is applied by Dijkstra graph search using meteorological data. Uh, for, for the graph search, uh, two networks were created uh, in each city pair, a baseline network and the NOPAC FRA network. A baseline network represents the current airspace configuration uh, existing the uh, NOPAC uh, ATS fixed five parallel routes. And NOPAC FRA, uh, NOPAC FRA network represents the NOPAC uh, free routing airspace configuration. Uh, in the free route airspace, a grid point uh, nodes are uh, set every one degree latitude and five degree longitude and connect to each node at the edge, uh, like uh, this uh, castle is here. okay, like this is so blue, blue color here, yeah, like network. Uh, in existing fixed ATS route area, uh, no networks uh, was configured here, no network here. And uh, this pink line uh, represents the fixed route. In the target airspace, uh, wind aloft, especially polar, polar jet stream, have a great influence on the flight route. So during graph search and the simulation, uh, weather conditions involving wind uh, must be taken into account. And uh, wind aloft, uh, that is a jet stream, uh, has seasonal changes, big seasonal changes. In winter, uh, February is winter. Uh, uh, in winter, the uh, jet stream has a strong wind axis and tends to southward. Southward. And in summer, uh, it becomes very so wind speed is weak. To select wind days to be reflected in the root calculation and simulation, a uh, clustering method was applied in the study. Uh, I thought uh, this method uh, is uh, so for the purpose of measuring the overall effect uh, considering the seasonal changes uh, with the seasonal wind reflection dates uh, for UPR calculation. So using the so, uh, realistic simulation uh, capable time, time so about 10, uh, around 10 times. Uh, for the clustering feature, 
published packets, packets tracks were used instead of actual weather data. Uh, by using the packets data, uh, the dat data can be handled easily, handled easily, and the tracks are already considering the wind conditions, so the data was suitable for this study, I thought. The latitude data uh, of the tracks were used uh, because the dead stream position and the strength tendency moves north-south direction and the latitude data represents the north-south direction. So I used the, uh, the feature, uh, uh, I used the latitude data as a features. So as shown in this figure, a three latitude values from each six tracks, packet tracks were used as features. And so one six zero west uh, longitude, uh, longitude, de longitude degree was uh, the, uh, where the truck spread most uh, from north to south. Uh, in clustering, uh, in clustering, uh, I used X means clustering method and determined uh, the classification number uh, of K means. So the result K equals six uh, are determined. So six clustering groups were classified. At least uh, one day uh, should be selected from each group. Total 11, total 11 wind pattern days were selected. So these figures show the selected 11 days of wind. Uh, first, uh, created the scenario and determine the wind reflection date and calculate the UPLs. Then, uh, run the air top first time simulator to create trajectories uh, for calculation of metrics. Uh, so, uh, this is a picture of the air top simulator. From here, uh, the result and the discussion will be explained. Uh, these figures show uh, flight routes. Flight routes and in red color, red color for east wind and the blue color for west wind flights. And uh, one example day of each clustering group is uh, presented here. The clustering groups are aligned according to the strong tendency of the jet stream. As the tendency of the flight routes, east of that red line, red line yeah, uh, followed the jet stream core when the jet stream was strong. And it tended to be closer to the minimum distance route when the jet stream was weak. And the west band, a blue color line, uh, flights avoided the jet stream headwind, even in weak wind conditions. Uh, to measure the flight load efficiency, uh, flight distance, uh, flight time, and the fuel consumption were compared of individual flights. In the comparison, uh, the, the differences between the differences between the values of the baseline flight route and the NOPAC FRA flight route was calculated. Uh, this table, this table shows the difference value statistics for each matrix. Negative value, negative values uh, means benefit of NOPAC FRA. So results show the, uh, for example, means, means of the value were negative or negative for all metrics. So it can be said that no FRA has potential for more beneficial routes than baseline. This slide shows the details of the results of each region, Alaska, North America, Continental, and Hawaii because the uh, geographical factors of departure and arrival uh, have been affected also uh, to the route. The 
explanatory metric is a fuel consumption in this slide, and that is directly affected to efficient flight. Alaska flight. Uh, effective use of the south, of, uh, south side of the Norfolk FR River eastbound flights. And the North America continental flights, uh, Norfolk FR gave more efficient route options for westbound flights uh, to avoid the jet stream headwind. In Hawaii flights, uh, the, imp the impact of Norfolk FR was not uh, significant. Uh, but overall, free routing in the NOPAC FRA uh, was shown to increase the possibility of more efficient individual flight routes. Uh, so why NOPAC FRA shows an advantage in indiv individual flight routes? Uh, reasons are I thought uh, the NOPAC FRA moves, uh, removes, removes the gap between the NOPAC airspace and the SEMPAC area and connect seamlessly, seamlessly uh, the NOPAC area and the SEMPAC airspace. That also enables flights to laterally traverse, traverse NOPAC area. However, uh, there is room for further improvement. Uh, several flights had a greater fuel consumption uh, in the FRA space compared to the baseline airspace. Uh, so this figure, right down figure, uh, shows these, uh, these routes. In the baseline, uh, representing a baseline is a blue, blue color, yeah, blue color line. A flight zone R220, yeah, R220, that is a uh, northernmost, northernmost NOPAC route, this, this, this line, yeah. R220 can operate with the minimum distance from the boundary with uh, Russian, Russian airspace. Uh, R220 waypoint is not on the free routing grid nodes. So uh, not possible with FRA configuration. Uh, there is room for integrity to create a network while uh, retaining the waypoints making up the fixed APS route. Uh, here, uh, I, noted, I noted that the, uh, the informal Pacific ATC coordinating groups um, called the IPAC-Z meeting, uh, which it provides a forum for uh, air navigation service providers and airspace users to discuss for near term ATC problems uh, between the United States and Japan, is currently considering options to recognize no park airspace. And uh, I'd like to comment here that the consideration in APAC is being given a remaining, remaining existing waypoints of. Uh, NOPAC ATS routes. So I feel that it is good direction for improving the efficiency in individual projects. Uh, next, uh, I explain the results of potential loss of separation, P loss, uh, for metrics of airspace capacity. P loss was calculated from uh, uh, trajectories of uh, an entire simulation day of 24 hours. A pairs of aircraft with loss of separation were detected at one minute intervals. Here, two, B, two P loss were calculated. P loss count and P loss time. P loss count is the number of pairs. And the period time is the time duration of loss of separation. And uh, it was three separation standards. Three separation standards were considered. Uh, 15 nautical miles, 30 nautical miles, and 15 nautical miles. Uh, 15 nautical miles and 30 nautical miles uh, were the most common uh, separation currently applied in this area. Not, uh, not specific. 
Uh, in addition to that, uh, 15, one five nautical miles were taken into consideration, assuming a further so reduction separation minima in near future. The results show uh, that the NOPAC FRA flights had a higher PLOS count and but lower PLOS time. Uh, regarding the PLOS count, uh, this figure PLOS count, uh, NOPAC FRA flights had higher count than baseline flights, but as smaller separation were applied, smaller separation were applied, uh, the gap becoming smaller. And regarding the PLOS time, uh, it showed the opposite trend. Uh, the NOPAC FRA flights had lower PLOS uh, than the baseline. Uh, why such a result were delivered? Uh, NOPAC FRA tend to have a higher PLOS count compared to baseline. Yeah, a previous slide I showed. And NOPAC ATS lose space. Uh, uh, but um, but time, yes. Possible reasons uh, for lower pilot time were thought that the greater dispersion of routes allowed by a uh, free routing airspace of flights between different steepheads. This table uh, shows weight of the same route uh, for pilot time, baseline, and the back the same route was judged at uh, intersections of two trajectories of less than five degrees. Uh, you can see that NOPAC FRA has a lower percentage, lower percentage uh, of same route period time. In the NOPAC FRA space, even if periods occurred, the trajectory of the flight divert after a while, like here. So the PLOS time decreased compared to the fixed NOPAC ATS root airspace. Uh, I'd like to discuss PLOS further. Uh, from the result of PLOS, I think there are the following issues further. Uh, a greater PLOS count indicate an increased number of uh, ATC interventions to resolve a loss of separations, and those could possibly cause further periods. Uh, but uh, the result of this study shows periods count was reduced if a uh, so smaller separation could be applied. So there is a possibility to reduce the increased reduced increase in the periods count in anopak uh, FRA in near future. As another concern, a uh, higher PLOS count is increased airspace complexity. Uh, when flight plans are based on fixed ATS routes, PLOS events tend to be clustered around the fixed locations, such as where ATS routes cross. Uh, it can be said that the position loss of separation occurring are fixed. In an FR environment, PLOS events tend to be more uh, dispersed due to the greater variability of flight trajectories. So this might increase controller workload to detect PLOS. So yes, this complex matrix for NOPAC FR evaluation and appropriate traffic controller support uh, function or supporting tool for PLOS detection and resolution issue to be considered uh, in future, I think. Uh, this is the last slide, uh, so uh, I'd like uh, to wrap up my presentation. Uh, in order to uh, evaluate the possible operate benefit and the impact of NOPAC FRA, uh, NOPAC FRA environment was designed and the first time simulation was well conducted. The results indicated that the NOPAC FRA network will be effective in increasing overall the efficiency of a flight route, individual flight routes. Uh, as metrics of airspace capacity, uh, the efficiency uh, in the efficiency, uh, we detected uh, P loss between aircraft pairs uh, from the simulated flight trajectories applying the different separation standard. NOPAC FRA increased the PLOS count over the fixed ATH load airspace configuration 
but uh, the increment was reduced as a minimum separation distance decreased. So more uh, small uh, separation minima was applied. Uh, as a next step toward realizing the NOPAC FRA, further consideration of the uh, increased co uh, complexity of the space are necessary. For example, the use of support tools offset its impact on air traffic controller workload are necessary. We are also aiming to expand the FRA concept to the Asia Pacific subregion. Further, the study and improve the method for selecting in, uh, representative wind aloft are now ongoing also. Uh, that is uh, all for my presentation. Uh, thank, you for, uh, thank you for your attention. Well, Hiroko, thank you very much for your presentation and for presenting this uh, feasibility study on the free uh, router space uh, in the Pacific region. And uh, just uh, an housekeeping uh, rule for all the attendees, if you have a question, please use the question and answer box in order to uh, provide your, que your question. Um, indeed, we can start with the question. We have one uh, that is a little bit technical. And the question is, uh, um, in order to uh, detect all the possible routes that connect the east and the westbound, uh, you use Distra, and when you were applying this algorithm, uh, did you take into account the variability of the wind? So, in other words, did you compute dynamic shortest path or not? Ah, uh, uh, so do you mean that so uh, I uh, calculate the so distance, flight to distance, shortest, shortest distance, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, because you are computing this, uh, um, you apply this in order to compute the network of this uh, oh, free route. Okay, okay. Is, is that uh, right? And then when you are computing the network, basically, you know, during the, the, the time, during the day, you might have a variability of the wind. And how did you take into account this variability of the winds? Uh, okay, thank you for our uh, questions. Uh, so actually, I uh, did not uh, calculate the so direct, uh, direct uh, uh, shortest pass uh, from the origin airport to the destination airport. Uh, only calculate using the network and uh, considering the wind. Uh, but uh, also, uh, however, uh, I calculated the so no wind situation. No wind situation, there is, uh, I think, the shortest possible operable uh, route pass uh, in this area. Because uh, in this area, there is uh, so a lot of uh, so limitations to the operation. So it's not so realistic to calculate the so direct pass from the origin to destination airport. Uh, so the, and if the operation is operable, uh, oper uh, is possible, uh, that is uh, so problems to through the many a lot of uh, flight information regions. There is an air navigation service charge. So uh, I think so. In I think this is uh, so for future my studies. I think that the uh, in the future I we need to the uh, consideration uh, consider take into consideration of the so like uh, air navigation service charge. Uh, it's not so uh, uh, small, uh, small effect. Uh, uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, just a curiosity from my side. In your study, you didn't consider um, flight level changes, right? So basically, uh, you just yes, consider. Yes, yes. And no, 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 yeah. In, in terms of, you know, uh, of potential impact of these flight level changes, mm. do you have a rough idea what could be the impact on your conclusion? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for yeah, your advice. So, yeah, uh, as you said, I did not uh, consider the so like a uh, uh, step crime flight in the cruising altitude. Uh, at least one or two times the step climbs uh, were operated in this airspace, I know. And uh, now, if the aircraft is uh, doing the step climbs, uh, 
uh, maybe I think the opposite direction traffic is affected because uh, the aircraft uh, 2,000 feet uh, upper uh, wanted to climb the 2,000 feet upper. Uh, there is a so uh, opposite direction flight level crosses passes. So uh, I think uh, when considering considering the so step climbs in the cruising altitude. Maybe the PROS will be uh, PROS will be increasing uh, for the due to the opposite direction of flight, but uh, in the same time, uh, flight changes the level. So same level traffic is uh, so uh, density is uh, uh, low, uh, then becoming low. So. Uh, mm, um, on the other hand, this same level pillows decrease. So I think so. Um, maybe it's affected uh, to the pillows count. But so I, I mean, I think it's needed to consideration, take into consideration step climbs in the cruising altitude. And actually now it's trying to uh, take into the calculation. And now it's doing. Okay, well, we still have two minutes for some additional questions, so you can please uh, fill your question. If we do not have any other question, then I will thank again Iroko, and we will wait two minutes for the second speaker, that is Pok Dong from Singapore. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Pok, you can start to test your presentation if, mm -hmm. it, if it works fine, and then I will introduce you in, mm -hmm. two, in you so one much. minute's time. <laughs> yes, I will share my slide first. Uh, I believe I am sharing. I hope you can see. Um, Yes, now uh, I can see, so uh, it's online, so it's working. So one more minute and then I will introduce yourself. And uh, uh, Yes, thank you so much. Okay, so it's exactly uh, on my watch 420 because I'm uh, in the UK, but uh, anyhow, it's uh, 520 Central European time. And I, I'm not sure what time it is uh, in Singapore, but anyhow, I believe it's quite late. Um, so our next speaker is Pok Deng. Um, Hopefully I pronounced correctly. And Pok is a researcher associate uh, at the Air Traffic Management Research Institute at University of Singapore. And his research focuses on conflict detection and resolution using data-driven methodologies. His talk, in fact, is about a machine learning based framework for aircraft manual detection and classification. And I hand over to you, Pok. Thank you so much for your introduction and welcome everyone. I, as introduction, my name is Dan Hufu. I am a research associate from Air Traffic Management Research Institute, Nanyang Technological University of Singapore. And today I will present about our work is a machine-based, a machine learning-based framework for aircraft manual detection and classification. And I would like to thank you to our college, uh, Dr. Fu Chung, uh, Prof. Sami Alam and Prof. Fu Yu in helping me to finish the work. Mm. I will start now. Uh, uh, first of all, the motivation of our work comes from obviously the forecast of rapid increasing of aircraft movement in Asia and Pacific area. 
which is requires a better understanding about the air traffic conditions to develop a better system of communication, surveillance, and navigation in Singapore FIR. And also the right hand side, as you can see, is the figure. It's a infographic from IATA shows that Asia Pacific region has the highest rate of growth in change in passenger journeys in the near future, 2021 to 2039 with 4.5%. And secondly, our second motivation is the knowledge and the rational behind maneuvering instruction from the air traffic controller is not easily extracted from ADSB data with normal rules by analyzing method. So we try with the, and recently there's a set phone of AI data driven methods in clustering and detection uh, motivate us to apply the classification with multiple labels to analyze the traffic maneuvering on scenario level. And from the motivation, we come to our research questions. Uh, using historical surveillance data, it is be we try to combine it with machine learning methods to be a data-driven framework for first of all for maneuvering detection. And second, after we have the maneuvers, we try to connect in the reason behind maneuvering aircraft. Uh, which come from the decision making of air traffic controller with the cluster results from machine learning model. The figure on the slide visualize the traffic in Singapore FIR with attitude color code. Our ambition is create a framework for automatically detect the maneuvering aircraft from traffic flow and also accordingly match the reason behind And I will step uh, into our approaching, which can be summarized uh, in the first block. As you can see, the blue color from historical data, we construct the past traffic scenario by animation and visualization. And we send this scenario to the air traffic controller. And uh, in the meantime, we use the machine learning to detect the maneuvering aircraft from a distributed data. Uh, and in the second block, the yellow, as you can see, in the orange flow, we collect the label feedback from air traffic controller. And in the green flow, we do future engineering and clustering. The final step is quite important. And the, our expected result is we analyzing the result of cluster from machine learning model and collected feedback label from controller. We try to match this thing. And our expectation is that the maneuvering group by controller should be clustered into a same group by machine learning algorithm. And the data set we use mostly include arrivals and departure in Singapore FIR from 15 April to 15 May 2019. Uh, and in our observation, most of our departure flights, we fly with direct to command and the maneuvering aircraft appear mostly on arrivals. So this work will focus mainly on arrival into sector, sector three and sector four, as you can see in the figure. We choose sector three and sector four because sector these two sectors is adjacent with TMA area and the air traffic controller have full management of arrivals since they enter Singapore FIR until they reach the TMA. Also, and this sector under the cover of primary radar, which uh, allow better surveillance and navigation. As you can see in the figure, the sector three is the green color and the sector four is blue color. And this is the red lights in the boundaries of Singapore FIR. Uh, at first, I think I will talk a bit about our feedback data set we got from the air controllers. We reconstruct the maneuvering scenario in total seven sectors of Singapore FIR and send to air traffic controller for their feedbacks and on the reason of maneuvering. In the figure, the for example, this is one scenario we sent to them. The blue line shows the trajectory of a maneuvering aircraft, which have a um, slightly maneuvering near the tow man waypoint. The yellow line is the line of nominal flight plan, which the aircraft normally should fly along. And the red line show the trajectory of the nearest aircraft when the blue aircraft make maneuvering. The summary of the labels we collected is shown in the table number one. So in here we have sequencing is the most common reason for the maneuver aircraft with 47%. Following with the coordinate optimization, 26%, and track shortening, 
The least common reason of maneuvering is weather with 7% and only 11 sample. This is also hard to verify due to lack of weather information in the ADSB data. And all of this uh, label from air traffic controller give us solely based on the reconstruction scenario. So this is also the best guess about the label. And I will go a little bit more details about our methodological framework, starting from a display data we detect using DB scan, we have a major traffic flow. And after that, from the flow detection, a nominal flight plan is reconstructed. We are not using flight plan data from airlines or ANSP. The reconstruction of flight plan is required for aircraft maneuver detection because we need a baseline and with assumption that within a major flow, any flight trajectory that significantly deviated from the flow's nominal flight plan is considered as maneuver. And after that, we have isolation forest to detect the anomaly trajectories, which we assume as maneuvering aircraft. And as you can see at the end of the blue block, after we had a maneuvering craft, <clears throat> the maneuvering aircraft, the next step is connect the maneuvers with controller feedbacks by constructing the context the time series feature, which present the dynamic behavior of aircraft along the travel time in sector. And we also use the k-mean to clustering the <clears throat> maneuver. And finally, based on the cluster of machine learning on one side and the label feedback of edge traffic controller on this maneuver in the other side, we are analyzing and connect and try to connect the results. Uh, I will step into the first part is the major flow. As I mentioned, I use major traffic flow to construct the nominal fly route across the sector. Uh, I apply DB scan for major flow detection and each data point in DB scan is a trajectory, which is represented by a five dimensional vector of longitude, latitude, coordination and of the aircraft when entry and exit the sector. Another information we consider is the total travel distance within the sector. And as in the figures, as you can see, the illustrate the major flows with different color code in sector three and sector four after we use DB scan. Uh, at the upper hand, you can see sector three, we had two arrival major flow, one from the left with the yellow color and one from the right with the blue color. They come to the same merging point before enter the DMA area. The sector three is also quite a bit smaller compared to sector four. And as you can see in the sector four below, the two major flow is quite distinguished and also comes from the same right side. Uh, after that, with assumption that any trajectory deviating significantly from the nominal flight route is maneuver aircraft, I apply isolation forest to detect the anomaly in each traffic flow. Uh, the reason the advantages of isolation forest is that this anomaly detection method working as direct discriminator, discriminator without generalization, the data pattern in advance. It also has low computational complexity and work well with high dimensional data and can be trained without the anomaly in the data set, which is very helpful because in our case, not every day we had a maneuvering aircraft. And the figure on the slide show example of anomaly trajectory in the red color in one flow of sector four. As you can see, the other normal aircraft is in the white color. The... Mm. And after classification for maneuvering aircraft, we do future engineering. And based on the air traffic controller survey on how they detect an aircraft that need maneuver action, we construct three features. And usually air traffic controller work based on a reference point, usually a merging waypoint before enter the TMA to evaluate the arrival order of aircraft in the sector. And we construct three features in time series format, including cross track distance, heading chain, and the traffic density in a circle of 50 nautical mile radius around the merging point before entering 
the DMA area. And each trajectory is resembled to have a same number of representative points before future engineering. Mm. As you can see in the figure on the right hand side, visualize how future at one time stamp is calculated. The blue aircraft is considered as the maneuvering and the yellow lines is the nominal flight plan the blue aircraft should follow. And the next step for the clustering feature after do the feature engineering, uh, we do the clustering feature in time series format with k-means. I normalize concatenate three time series feature and apply k-mean clustering for time series with dynamic time graphing as metric. And the same choice is calculated using dynamic time graphing very center average. By looking at the same choice of different cluster, we recognize the differences in behaviors of maneuvering aircraft. Uh, for example, as you can see in the right hand side figure, the same choice in the red line. And for example, in the sector four flow zero, maneuvering in cluster zero, here we have is the first row here, tend to maneuver in the middle of the travel route and then back to normal flight plan. While in the cluster number three, it's been the last one, the maneuvering tend that <coughs> tend to start from the beginning of the end of the sector and lately the aircraft will back to the nominal route. Uh, after clustering and characterizing the maneuver aircraft, we check the cluster feedback with label from air traffic controller. And ideally, with our expectation from the beginning, the maneuvers that share the same controller's labels should fall into one cluster. What we're facing a challenge is that due to highly fragmented label data in some class after filter with sector and flow and some <coughs> false negative, uh, some label I is not well clustered. In the right hand table, a good result is that in the majority of sequencing label in flow zero sector three, with k equal to three and four is clustered into one group with 64 and 55 percentage correspondingly. The figure sh here show a sample of one day traffic of flow zero in sector three with color code of altitude. And finally, we try to combine the maneuvers in both sector three and four and put through the clustering to check if there is any general rules or behavior of maneuvering aircraft and in different label. The results in the table show that despite a low number in stable size and different maneuvers label from air traffic controller fall into different cluster by machine. For example, the majority of coordinate optimization fall into cluster zero and the sequencing fall into cluster number two. And corresponding in the graph, the maneuver in cluster two, as you can see in the last row, tend to enter the sector with high deviation in cross-track distance, while the density around the machine point is increasing, as you can see here. And this suggests for a context uh, connection between the labels of controller and the cluster from machine learning model. And for a short summary, and uh, this framework is about maneuvering detection from ADSB data and the connection between the main rule green aircraft and the rational behind the air traffic controller action, which have for understanding and provide knowledge about prediction or recommendations maneuver in different traffic situation. The detected maneuvers aircraft from machine learning model is associated with the label from controller. So it would be more practical and much with controller way of thinking. Uh, in the next step, the framework serve as input for broader system of supporting and recommendation for air traffic controller. Uh, however, in the working process, some challenging that word to mention is the process is an uh, arduous task in collecting the label from air traffic controller, which directly leads to the insufficient data for supervised learning model. So the label here is served at the contextual comparison in the supervised, so we had at the price of performance. This also suggests that more complete data set in operational environment would advance the research in air traffic management. 
Uh, and I think I still should attempt. So I will show an example of scenario reconstruction we sent to the controller here in the video. And as you can see in the video, we have the blue aircraft is the maneuvering one. It's the fly level 390 and the, the code SAA 633. And the nominal fly one is the red one is flying and it's the closest aircraft. So the controller will look into this situation and they give us feedback what is the best scenario that happened in the You see an example, and I think more example can be found in the paper. We put all of this data on the GitHub also. Uh, uh, thank you so much for listening to my presentation, and I'm more than happy to answer any question if you. Well, thank you very much, Brock, for this presentation. And uh, as I said before, if you have any question, please use the Q&A box and I take advantage to start. In the um, analysis um, that you did about the data, did you consider the, the, the altitude of the trajectory or no? Uh, sorry, can did, you repeat? In analyzing the data, the trajectory data, did you focus only on the, uh, let's say, the, the 2D dimension, that's mean the, the, the root or also on the, on the altitude? of the flight. So did you uh, consider the also the third dimension or you focus only on the two dimension? That is the, uh, on I, the horizontal I, plane. Yeah. I think for the dimension, as I mentioned, uh, uh, as I mentioned here, for the DB scan, the feature I use is the location. Uh, the information about the location of the aircraft is mean the longitude, latitude of entry and exit point from the sector and also the total travel distance of the sector. So each trajectory is represent as a five dimensional vector for the DB scan and for the isolation forest. Uh, I think I will go. Uh, for the isolation forest, we also uh, consider the cost track distance, the distance chain, and the traffic density at the machine point to detect the anomaly aircraft also. And this is also after the time series format, we are using k means to clustering. Okay. And also a curiosity, because you said that this uh, uh, should be, um, you know, this approach should be used within a framework in order to assist a traffic controller in order to detect maneuver. What are the other components that you need in order to reach this goal? Uh, actually, as I mentioned, the result, it comes from two sides. One side is the controller and one side from the machine learning method. So I found the machine learning method side, we use the isolation for us to detect a potentially maneuver it evaluate by the computer. And we send this scenario to the controller to say, this could be a true positive or a true negative. So it could be some wrong assemble. And if it's a true positive, the controller will try their best to give us some feedback about what they think about what happened in the scenario. And also actually the label we have here, um, as you can see, is the different scenario in sequencing Track shortening, weather or coordinate optimization is also the label we have after we discuss with controller. The, because we look at the two different sides of a problem. The controller is focused on seeking, maybe maintain the safety uh, of the aircraft and make sure each aircraft is arrived at one waypoint, especially around the machine point on time. But we focus on like generalized the behavior after the of the decision made by controller. So the, this label and from us and this label from controller, we try to match after discussion. Okay, yeah, thank you. Now the, the curiosity was slightly different on mine. Uh, the you know the, the goal, the ambition here is to develop yes. a decision support tool for the yes. air traffic controller. 
and, yes, yes. Uh, and this uh, machine learning uh, algorithm is going to be part of this tool, is an element. Yes. The question yes. is, okay, what else uh, you think are, you know, is going to be part of this tool? Ah. In order to then to assist the air traffic controller, what is the, the long, what is really the, <laughs> the vision? I don't yeah. know if you can answer. Uh, uh, I understand. Yeah, I'm sorry. Now, it's mean from the, our ambition after we can like detect and clustering, we had a special characteristic of the maybe maneuvering. We can deliver a recommendation about the first this aircraft in this scenario. For example, the cross track distance ten. We can predict real time is tend to behavior like the density of the around the machine point here is high or low, or maybe it will increase in at the end, so that we should or not recommend this specific aircraft to make a maneuver soon or later, something like that in the controller. But also that's uh, one side from the machine learning, but the label of the machine learning will match with the thinking of the controller like, okay, the con this maneuver is for sequencing, or maybe this comes from coordinate optimization of the air traffic for low for the TMA area in the next area, or maybe this because of the weather condition. So this recommendation for the controller is like suggesting the maneuver action for aircraft in different different situation, which the aircraft has the maybe similar characteristic belong to this cluster. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Pok, for your presentation and for answering the question. And um, we are uh, a little bit earlier than the plan. There will be the, the plenary session in uh, almost 20 minutes about the COVID. So uh, I wish all of you, uh, you know, a good uh, panel um, session. And then I will see you soon. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye bye and good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, bye bye.